Sure. Thanks. Hey, Sam. Um, yeah. If I'm if uh, if I'm not mistaken, Barry Odom was on the sideline for most or all the game the other day. What, yeah. What what went into the, that decision? Will it will it stay there? I don't know. Um, we just felt like with uh, where we're at injury wise back there and things of that and other, we just felt like we needed him down there to um, inspire, coach on the sideline, face to face, things of that nature. So I don't know if it will or not. Um, uh, could this week again, you know, just simply because we're. Uh, uh, there's a possibility we might play some young kids, you know, and so he, you know, and we've got Dom, Coach Bowman back there as well, Tom. But you know, we might might do it again. I I, I don't know. Hey, on the short yardage stuff the other day, a bunch of different backs like got shots at it. Rocket did Dominic, Mr. yeah. Chad. Were those like, hey, who can get it in there? Were those specific plays kind of meant for those? Uh, no, I think we were going to leave Dominique in there uh, on the second second one, and then. Uh, uh, we just uh, we didn't feel good with the way that uh, we attacked the play, so we uh, put another running back in there. Gotcha. And then the time you said you'd mentioned you'd been by the BYU Stadium, do you recall what what you were out there for? What was going on? You know, I think I might have been out there recruiting. Um, hmm. I, it may have been. Um, I can't remember how far Provo is from Dixie, Utah, but I know I went out in recruiting uh, to see the national championship game out there and Garden City was playing. And I think we were recruiting somebody from, I think it was uh, Dixie playing Garden City, actually, if I remember correctly. And I may have just drove up. I can't remember how far it is. I didn't if it's a lengthy of drive, but I may have drove up there just to see the stadium, see the campus at that point. I can't remember, to be honest with you, but I think that that would be the case. Or it might have been when I was recruiting one of those kids around that area that I just drove by the stadium. Okay. Yeah, Coach, uh, with it being a place that you haven't been before, I, I know you you don't do like the pregame stuff or the, the walkthrough stuff in the stadium, but – is there anything that you do differently as far as travel for this game versus what you've done for other road trips? That's we we haven't planned that. Uh, you know, we've showed them shown them pictures of the stadium and and talked to them about you know the when we get off the bus and that it's a um, uh, big time environment and things of that nature. Uh, but really, no plans different than normal. I don't think you've talked about Quincy McAdoo at, at cornerback yet. I know you talked about Bakke because it was last week. So how did that process unfold? And is he moving back or after? Well, we can't get healthy, Trey. So, you know, we're trying to sort of like when you know high school ball, you you go over there and look at your roster. You go down the, the hall and say, hey, what are you doing this afternoon, you know, type deal. And Quincy's played it in high school. And uh, really, to be honest with you, Trey, he, you know, he hurt his hand and he wouldn't do us a whole lot of good at receiver um, because uh, uh, of the hand situation. And at least we be believe he could tackle, you know, uh, still with a with a slight wrap on his hand. Mm -hmm. And he actually came to us uh, once we moved Bakke, Quincy came to us and said, Coach, if you need some help on defense, uh, I'd be more than happy as soon as I get cleared to go to practice to move over. And uh, to be honest with you, he's a natural over there. I mean, he's a really good receiver, but uh, he looks great over there. And they've spent a lot of time meeting with him. Uh, if that gives you any indication of what we think that he could do over there. Um, a lot of extra time. Meeting. Matter of fact, I just saw him down the hallway uh, uh, he came in for some extra meetings. So um, they think a lot of him, and that's how it happened. Do you expect him to stay there, or is it just kind of going to be see where it goes? I think for him and uh, him and Bakke both, we, we gave them the opportunity to uh, go back in the spring to wide receiver if that's what they choose. We'll just let the kids, you know, we'll obviously 
encourage one way or the other, but we'll let the kids decide what they want to do uh, once spring, but they'll both be over to the secondary for the remainder of the year. Thanks, Coach. Scotty? Yeah, Sam, Bryce Stevens had a big touchdown catch for you last week. I'm, I'm curious what you like about him as a, as a playmaker and if he's kind of positions himself to increase his role moving forward. I, I don't know about the increase yet, but uh, I, I, I would assume the answer would be yes. You know, I, I think we, you know, you play kids that, that have shown you that they can compete and do well. And certainly that catch, uh, that was a big time catch. I think where Bryce's confidence has been coming from is from the punt returns. You know, he's catching a ball better. I think if there was any type of, you know, I don't know about him, it would be just his catchability, his consistency at catching the football. Uh, certainly that's been erased. Uh, but I think a lot of that has to do with uh, the confidence he's had with catching punts. And uh, so he certainly moved up. Uh, in our mind of guys that we would put in uh, earlier in the game. And, uh, of course, he earned that, I felt like, uh, on Saturday as well. I don't know. Is that the only question you ask? Or... Yeah, that was that was pretty much it. Um, and I wanted to ask you about Dalton Wagner, too, around the program for a long time. Um, I guess just what kind of growth have you seen from him the three years you, you've had him? You know, I, when I first saw him, I thought he was – um, before I got to know him, I just thought he was a great big guy that was kind of stiff and things of that nature. And man, I don't think that anymore. I think he's a really fine player. I think he's going to have an opportunity to play in the NFL tougher than tough. Um, um, a guy that, uh, the kids look up to, uh, he certainly has gotten a lot better. He's been, he's bending better. He's much stronger than he was. Uh, but I will say this, you win a lot of games with him because he's he's a good player, A, and B, he's tough and cares. And uh, uh, he's a great kid to have on the football team. Just lastly, have you been kind of impressed with his durability maybe this year? Because I know in, in camp maybe there were some questions about his his health and being able to, to get all the way through the season healthy. Well, he's always a little beat up. You know, I, I think a, like a lot of linemen are. Uh, but it has been impressive because he's uh, played the majority of snaps um, uh, this season. And, um, you know, it was a back issue, you know, before and and uh, early in my career here, you know, he 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 uh, he really couldn't uh, play a whole bunch of snaps consecutively. But he has this year and I, I attribute that to the weight room, his hard work. But. Yeah, knock on wood, he's 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 done a great job this year. Bob, um, hey, hey Sam, how you doing? Hey Bob. Um, hey, I talked to Caden Hawes uh, this week, and he mentioned you know he come up to UA camps when he was at Pulaski Academy. Um, he he was a center, yeah. and um, he spoke very highly of you. He, he said he didn't get offered, but he was glad to be at BYU. Met his wife there, very happy, but. Um, I was just wondering maybe what you remember about him and and if you see him on film, he's number 95 nose guard, what what maybe Yeah, I, I know who he is, but I, I, I can't remember him out of high school, unfortunately. I sure wish I could have, but I I can't I can't remember him. Uh he is a strong guy um that runs well, uh, uh can shed blocks. Uh, I like him. I think he's a good player. Um, I don't know if if we were. I don't know that we offered him or not back then. I can't remember. I know I, we didn't as an offensive lineman. I I, I would remember that. But um, to lose a kid out of our state that's playing that well is is fortunate for him. Unfortunate uh, for us because he's a good player. He could help us if he was playing for us. I can tell you that. He was a senior in 2015, and you. We're going to Georgia, so you know maybe that just kind of. Hey, also, I know it's not it's far from ideal to move true freshman receivers to DB in the middle of the season. That's not exactly a scenario you want to draw. But do you get a sense those guys are excited and enthusiastic, and maybe they can bring some energy over there? Is you know they, from that standpoint, they're really excited, and uh, it's fun to watch. You know, they're getting better, uh, playing faster. They're 
starting to understand a little bit more. I'm not going to lie to you and say they know everything that's going on, but if we put them between, it's sort of like an offensive lineman. If you put a guard between a tackle and a center that knows what he's doing, they can, they can talk to him, you know, and then let their athletic ability, uh, you know, make plays. I don't know if we're quite there yet with uh, either one of those guys, but I believe after the bye week, I believe that both of them will play uh, football for us. A significant amount, I was going to say. I, I don't know that for sure, but but they're both going to help us uh, this year. Um, and a lot of times you make moves, Bob, and it doesn't work out. Uh, these two will work out, and and they'll help us this year. They're 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 talented kids. They were good whiteouts as well, but but they're physical and they're talented and they want to get on the field. Um, so they're willing to do the extra to do that. I really like them. Uh, I liked them at wide out. I like them over at the DB spot too. Thanks. Tom. What's your psychological approach been with the team this week? Cause with all the injuries, I think guys can maybe get it in their head. Oh man, we're down. What, what, what's your approach been with them? Well, to be perfectly honest with you, we set very similar a year ago, um, having lost three in a row and or lower than low because we had lost to Auburn, uh, which we thought uh, going into the game that certainly that we had a great opportunity to win the game. Uh, we started slow. They started fast. We caught back up. You know the game. Uh, so there was there's some similarities. Uh, we rolled up our sleeve, believed in each other. Um, and you know, one, I don't know what it was, I guess, uh, for the last five games. And, uh, so we're, we painted this, we've done it to ourselves. Um, um, but we, you got two choices. You either rally the troops. Now, some of that has been a little bit different of how we've practiced this week. Um, we have to start the game. Um, you know, we, we are waiting uh, right now, I, that's that's not fair to the kids, but we're not starting fast, and uh, we need to. Uh, we need to get some early emotion, um, and that could happen with uh, you know scoring early, getting a three and out, something like that that we haven't done over the last uh, two weeks, and uh, so we're talking a lot about that. We're practicing different. Um, basically, we're practicing a little bit like. You would like I did when I was in high school, and and uh, we're going good on good right after Indy, and and uh, we're doing that. We did that Monday. We didn't do it Tuesday. We're going to do it again today, and and just kind of uh, continue about when the when the whistle blows. We've got to play uh, when you know we don't have time to wait around. So that's been a little bit of a change this week, but. You know, you always worry. I'm, I'm long-winded here, Tom, but you always worry about your team when they lose, you know, and, and wouldn't we lose? Um, uh, but I don't think we have a confidence problem. Uh, certainly we're not overconfident, you know, but we, I don't think you worry about a psychological, do you believe in a, each other, confidence, all those things you worry about. I don't think that's the case. Uh, we're trying to figure out the why, you know, and, and we've got several reasons of why, and one of them was me and, and our coaches, and we've got to continue to get better. And some of it is, you know, turning the ball over and things of that nature and not converting and, and not tackling and some of those things. So we know the why. We just got to practice better to uh, cure the cure the problem and – and uh, I think that includes the coaches. We're we're in this thing. We we got in this thing together, and we'll get out of it together. And uh, that's kind of what it's been uh, this week. And just to check off this box, KJ's cleared everything he needs to clear to be full go. And yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how sharp? How sharp has he been? You know, like very playing fast. Very. I mean, we had a two minute drill before the half. Um, uh, yesterday and uh sharp 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 and so uh you know, our kicker kicked well kick kicked both field goals right there uh, with the ones and the twos and 
uh, it went well, but KJ's he's 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 uh, you don't know that he missed last week. To be honest with you, he looks good. Right. Yeah, Coach, you guys are in the evaluation period. I was wondering if you're getting out to Utah or any of that region, or if you're going to hit some other area this weekend. Trey, we're not. Uh, we have been doing that, but. You know, this game is a really important game to us, and not that all of them aren't, but I I just wanted to keep the coaches and the players intact and everybody was at every meeting and all those things. So, uh, no, we're not. The, the great thing is we have – we're off next week, so we'll have an opportunity to get everybody out, including myself. But uh, this week, no, we decided we're going to we're gonna go up there as a team and stay together the whole time. and. Not that you can't win games doing it the other way. I just, I just decided, hey, let's, let's. Nobody goes out this week. Let's all get on the plane, go together, and and uh, hopefully we can get a win. I know um, there's no whining about the schedule or anything, but with the the only game that you guys have at home in October is Alabama. That was October first. Y'all had a lot of great recruits in for that one, but I don't. Th I guess the next home game is November fifth. I think is that difficult yeah. with having that long a stretch, not being able to to bring in recruits? Well, yes, I think it is. We were aware of that, obviously, when the season started. So we tried to, you know, pile as many as we could in here uh, in the month of September. You know, we had 11 o'clock game, so we didn't have as quite as many recruits uh, as normally you know, when you get a night game or an afternoon game. Uh, but, yeah, it makes it difficult, especially, to be perfectly honest with you, when when you lose some games, you know, it, it's uh, – and you're not able to uh, get the kids uh, back in the fold and let them know, hey, everything's going to be okay and all those things. Uh, if you're losing, it's probably, to be honest with you, worse uh, not to have a home game than if you're winning because if you're losing, you need to get back in front of them, you know, and, and get them on campus and – be reassuring and things of that nature. And that's what's probably the worst part, Trey, is is you go basically the month of of October and you don't you don't get to see them. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate your time. All right, guys. Have a good day.